Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another and very special edition of the Routine Episodes. I'm Vaughn with Boring Mastery, and I want you to smash that like button, dance all over to the subscribe, and make sure you share this video with everyone, and also leave a comment as you're going through it. Now today I'm joined by the fabulous Miss Brittany. How are you today? Okay. She's ready to do a waltz. I hope you are too, because in this special edition, it is the beginner level. So sometimes people confuse the word basic with beginner. They're not really related, okay? So I figured it's about time we do some really special uh, introductory figures for people who are literally like this. Now, if you find yourself dancing around the floor like a baby giraffe first learning to walk, and you literally have two left feet, this is for you. This is not for people who've been dancing for a few years unless you teach. This is for you if you're a total newbie to dancing. You're like, I might dabble and try this boring dancing thing. Today is the day, my friend. So here's the thing. If you're new to dancing, there's so much technique to learn and that's what can be overwhelming. So let me rest your fears. All you're gonna focus on is the pattern to start with. So we can get our pattern, which is a box. So if you can draw a little box, that's what we're gonna dance. There's six steps in the box. And then we have a change step, there's three. And the purpose of a change step is to link one box to another. That's it, it's like Lego. Very fancy, fancy, really good looking Lego. And so when we understand how to do the pattern, you can focus on footwork and timing. So with those three things in mind, the pattern, the footwork, and the timing, you'll have a much greater degree of enjoyment and success in your dancing. If you can get that pattern working for you and you don't have to think about it, the technique will start to really kick in. Now technique is as simple and as difficult as footwork. So if you can start to pay attention to the heels and toes, that probably will be the ceiling for what I would classify as like a raw beginner or a newbie dancer, someone who's never done it before. And in our years of dancing and teaching, we find that same uh, problem exists throughout the studio. So there's certainly a good way to learn and there's a very complicated way to learn. So with this pattern, focus on the six steps of each box and then how we link one left box to one right box and then practice it over and over and over again. And then the next phase in your development will be turning the box. Whoa, I said it, turning the box, Brittany. They're gonna turn that shit, right? Because when you do waltz, you don't go in a straight line, right? We just learn that for a basic structure to know how to close and change our feet. Then it has to turn because the waltz beauty comes from doing left and right turns and of course doing rotational figures as you get much better. So. Pay attention to the pattern, pay attention to the timing, focus on your feet, and as a last little extra tip, like you need a little bit more just to think about, posture, okay? So when we're to take hold with your, uh, with your partner or whoever you have decided to throw this routine at at home, this is how not to hold. Am I dancing well? No, you are not, okay? So nobody wants to be hung on, no one wants to be felt like they're a lady bag. So make sure you hold yourself up from the waist, really tall uh, core, and then make sure with the hold that the right hand is comfortably rested on the lady's shoulder blade, and then there's no gap, so there's no gap, all right? It's not salsa, you're not trying to hold too low, do you know what I mean, gentlemen? You wanna hold up nice and high. Ladies, you keep your head a little bit to the left, but that's a lesson for another time, and I have videos you can look at about posture, if you wish, that will help you very, very much. And then the hold is the left hand holding the lady's right hand, and it is actually holding, so don't be weird and have your fingers up in the air. This is, this is just weird being Edward Scissorhands trying to dance the waltz, okay? So hold her hand and keep your elbows out. So you can see that we have a straight line elbow to elbow, that's our goal. Now even if you're social dancing, you need this because you need balance when you dance. So if we have good posture and we have good post, uh, footwork and, and basic principles working, we'll have balance and that's the key, right? So I've definitely noticed in my years of teaching the Best dancers are shaped from training these fundamentals very, very early. So whilst we have a hold in place and our posture, as we learn any step, we also have to remember that when you hear me say close, your feet must touch. So let's show how to close real quick because this is weird for some people, right? They come in the studio and they're grown people, grown adults, they come in, I'm like, close your feet, and have no idea, they're like, I am closed. Like, this is not closed, right? So feet apart does not mean closed. Bringing your heels together does not mean closed. Toes together and heels out is not closed, right? Close is literally the feet, the entire inside of the feet together. If you can understand that with the pattern and get that to timing, 
I know that sounds like a lot, but it actually isn't. Once you uh, run the experiment, you will find your dancing just feels so much better because you'll be able to change feet. All right, so closing our feet allows us to swap from one foot to the other. Okay, so in order, we have our posture. So we take a nice little setup. Okay, hold our bodies up in a good hold. And then we use the pattern. We do the pattern. Keep the pattern in the forefront of our mind. Once that's working, we think about our feet. Are our feet closing or are they slightly apart? And as a partnership, it makes a difference. If my feet are apart and Brittany's feet are apart when we're supposed to be together, the next step won't work. We'll hit each other, okay? And gentlemen, you want a happy lady, okay? You always want a happy lady on the dance floor. Am I right? I think I'm right, <laughs> okay? So once we have the footwork, Timing sits on top of that. So again, you cannot be off time when you dance. It's, it's a no-no. It's just forbidden. It's non-negotiable. It's a fundamental. Always be on time. But again, you can't be on time if you have bad structure. So if your feet stink and you've got bad posture, you're not really going to have very, very good timing. Okay? So that's what we're aiming for. Footwork, timing, posture. Say it with me now. Footwork, timing, posture. All right. So with those three, Go confidently into these special episodes where you can start to focus on uh, aiming to get those with the pattern to music. Leave a comment below, hit the subscribe button, tell your friends, and let me know how your results go. All right, this is Vaughn. Let's dive on in to the episode. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Raw Beginner Figures and Steps for the Waltz. So we're going to blend two very basic movements, the left foot box waltz and the right foot box waltz. They literally are a box, six steps, but to link them we also include what we call a change step. So pay attention to how we move and then how we link one box to another. Okay, so we start off, gentlemen with the left foot, ladies with the right foot, and we'll go forward first. Forward, side, close, and then backward, side, together. Now, we repeat that. The second box waltz, ladies, go back with the right foot. Back, side, close, then forward, side, together. Okay, now, unless we want to stay stuck on the spot and chasing our tails, we want to make sure we link the left foot box to the right. So, what we do is a change step. So, here's how it happens. I go forward again to the side and close and change my feet. Now instead of going backwards, I'll now commence going forward this time with my right foot and ladies will go back with the left foot. So we're, we're mirroring, we're swipping, uh, swapping sides. So I go one, two, three, so forward side close, then backward side together. Repeat that. Ladies go backward side close, then forward side together. Okay. Now, again, we don't want to stay stuck doing the right foot box waltz. So to link it and go back to the beginning, take the right foot and do another change step, this time with the right foot for the man and left foot for the lady. So now we go backwards, ladies forward. Forward, side, close, and then back side together for the man. And that brings together those two steps. All right, everyone. So we've got the timing for the raw beginner waltz. Now, there's only three counts in waltz. So if you can count to three, you can dance. That's my opinion anyway. But it's really important you notice as we're learning, I'm going to count to six for the box waltz. And then I'll count to three for the change step so you know which is where. Okay, so let's start off. Here we go. With my left foot and ladies with the right foot, we're going to count together. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's one left foot box waltz. Do another one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, what's next? 
the change step. So now there's only three counts, three steps. One, two, three. Now into the right foot box waltz, I can now step forward with the right foot, ladies back with the left, and we count to six again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and let's repeat that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, do you remember what brings the two together? It's the change step. So now, back with the right foot, ladies forward with the left, and we're ready to count one, two, three, and we can start it all again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. Thank you, Brittany, for coming for a dance today. How did you go at home? Was it, yeah? Or was it, oh my God, I need a bit more work, right? Okay, so for staying this far in the video, I have an extra special treat for you. So here's another tip that will help you avoid disaster on the dance floor, okay? And that is how to close and change your feet. I cannot stress how important this is. In fact, in fact, before we even do it, this is what happens when people come into the studio for a bit of a dance with us. We have new classes each month. People get the pattern quite quickly a lot of the time when they understand what we, we just did. And then they get the timing and then guess what happens? They smash each other's feet, especially when they go to turn. And then the classic is, oh, I forgot my step. Well, the reason you forgot your step is not because you're trying to literally have a memory test on your steps. It's all about weight. So if you can just stand with your feet apart, Boom, right, on your toes for a minute, right? Feel that, okay, you need a little bit of balance there. Now, if you can close your feet together for me, so close your right foot to your left foot, boom, boom, there you go, okay. So, still on your toes. Now, when your feet close like that, that is the foot that should lower. So the rule that you can write down is the foot that comes in is the one that goes down. Now, you should have your left foot free. There should be no question what foot you have free. It's, it's just so simple. It's like now you know your left foot. The main thing now is which direction you're going forward or backwards on the next step. And that's the secret of understanding ballroom dancing, okay? Because if you dance with flat feet, you're screwed. It's not gonna work. You'll have no idea what to do. So if you go on your toes again, right? It's so up on your toes. All right, Brittany, you stay there and I'll just go here. Okay, this time we're gonna close our left foot to our right foot. Let's go the other way. So left foot to the right foot, boom, boom. And then close that foot and lower it to the ground. You should have your right foot free. And because of that, you now know that's the foot you're about to use. So there's no weird like tap dancing. And so if we're doing our box waltz, and I go forward on my left foot, ladies go back on the right. One, I go up onto my toes, I close and I lower. Which one do I lower? The one I just used. My left foot comes in, the lady's right. Boom shakalaka, we have the correct foot. So now, Brittany can come forward, I can go backward. We can do our next box to the side on a toe. Up we go, close, which foot and lower? Gentlemen's right, ladies left. And because of that, we always have the correct foot free. So because you've stayed this far into the lesson, there's your extra bit of goodness. So remember the basics. We have our pattern, okay? You gotta remember the pattern, write it down. We have our timing, and we have the way we hold our body and our posture. So footwork, timing, posture is where we're going. Now, there's so much more we can develop throughout all of this, but as a basic structure, even as professional dancers, you can find so much to do within that. So don't treat this lightly. It's very, very good for your dancing development, particularly when we get into turning. So use this as a little warm up if you're already an experienced dancer, and then proceed to the other routine episodes on the waltz to start to notice what a basic, meaning basic syllabus routine looks like, but notice the weight changes, okay? 99% of the time, there's a closing action and the weight change happens, and then off you go, all right? so. With that being said, make sure you subscribe, share this with your dance friends. Thank you for being here, and we'll see you in the next episode where we master the art of ballroom and Latin dancing.